We begin today at the Mishnah on Dafayn Chesom with base three lines down or four lines down from the bottom of the Yomit. Okay, this uh, Mishnah actually begins sort of a new subject. The last ten blat we were learning about Yuchsin, different uh, halachas regarding the lineage of Ayid and the Kashras or Ayid and so on. And the Mishnah goes back to halachas related to uh, Kedushin and the Shlichas of Kedushin. A father, as we learned in the Masechta before, has the ability to be Makadish's daughter, which is a katana, or even a naira, up until the age of 12 and a half. So the father gave permission to a shliach to be Makadish's daughter. But after that, the father himself went and was Makadish's daughter. So if the condition of the father was before the shliach managed to go and be Makadish, his daughter to the man that he sent her for, he sent him to do be Makadish to. So then Kiddush of Kiddushin, the father's Kiddushin is a Kiddushin, and not the shliach. If the man that the, the shliach was Makadish to, that Kiddushin was first, then Kiddush of Kiddushin. Then his Kiddushin will be a Kiddushin. Is he the same person? No, a different person, a different person, yeah, of course, yeah. So Rashi explains that the point of that this mission is saying is, the father sent this man to be a shliach, to be Mekadosh's daughter. He never clearly nullified the shlichus, but by the very fact that the father goes and is Mekadosh her to someone else, that is revealing his intent that he wants to be Mevatel the shlichus. But now, Vim Einoi Yudua, well, if he's not Mevatel the shlichus, then the father can't be Makadish this, uh, his daughter to who he wants. He already appointed a shliach, and that shliach is the one that has the, he's taking the father's place. And he's mm-hmm. the one that, uh, and so therefore the fa- what the father is doing is, is worthless. So the point is that the father was mevatel the shlichus. The many yidua, if it's not known who was Makadish first, then shneim neistim get. So then both of them are going to have to give a get. We're not sure who she got married to. So if she now decides she wants to get married, to a third person, not to any of these two people, she's going to need a get as a suffix here from both of these people. Vim Rotsu, if these two people, the one that the father was Mekadosh to, the one that the Shliach was Mekadosh to, if they agree, so then Echad Nois and Get, one of them can give a get, and Echad Kainis, and the other one can go and marry her without, uh, he doesn't have to, they don't have to both give a get. One gives a get, and the other one can go and marry her. In, in Shulchan Aruch it says, though, that this one that goes and marries her is going to have to give her a Kedushin again, because we're not sure that the first Kedushin that he gave her ever took effect, because he could have been second, so then that, that Kedushin would have, wouldn't have been a Kedushin. The Mishnah says the same halacha regarding a woman sending her own shliach to be Mekadosh, a man for her. A woman that sends a shliach to receive a Kedushin for her. And then she went and received the Kedushan for herself from another man. So, if she received her Kedushan from the man that she got it from first, so then her Kedushan is a Kedushan. By receiving it herself from another man, she's revealing her intent that the original Shliach she sent is bottle. If the Shliach she sent was first, then Kiddush of Kiddushin. Then the Kiddushin that that Shliach that she sent received the Kiddushin first, she's already Mikudashis. He fulfilled her Shlichas. And her Kiddushin is nothing. If, it's, if they don't know who got the, shli, the Kiddushin first, Shneim, Noisim Lo Get, then both of these are going to have to give her a Get if she wants to get married to someone else. Vimratsu, if the two men agree, Echad Noisim Lo Get, one could give a Get, Vechad Kainis. And the other one will, uh, will go ahead and marry her. So the Gemara will now explain, the Mishnah seems to be saying the exact same halacha, once regarding the shliach of the man, and the second time regarding the shliach of the woman. Why does it have to repeat the same thing? Mm-hmm. Says the Gemara, it was necessary to say both of these cases. The If it would be saying here, the case where the father, he's the one that appointed a shliach to be Mekadosh's daughter, and then he went and was Mekadosh himself. To someone else, I would say the reason that we consider this to be that the father was mevatel his shlichus, even though he never said it clearly. But we understand from what he's doing that he wants to be mevatel the shlichus, because a man is more proficient regarding yichus, regarding lineage. He know he understands more and who's the good yichus, who's not a good yichus. So the fact that he sent the shliach and now we see that he's being the Kaddish's daughter to someone else, what is that a sign of? That he realized that there's another chassan for his daughter that has better yichus. And that's why it's going to be Mekadish, someone that's 
different than who he sent the shliach to be mekadesh because he wants he wants a better yichus. So it's a, it, this is a reason to to assume that he wants to be mevatel the original shlichus. Avil it's a delekim lo biyuchsin, but when it comes to a woman, she's not doesn't know so well the difference of yichus of one man or another man. So in such a case, if she appointed a shliach and then she goes and she's mekadesh someone else for herself. So, I would say that the fact that she went to be Mekadesh somewhere for herself, that should be worthless. She already appointed a shliach, and she never intended to be Mevatel that shlichus. I, why did she go and was Mekadesh someone for herself if she already sent the shliach? She was, uh, wanted to have a backup plan. Let's say that that uh, shliach doesn't fulfill his shlichus. So then I have this other man that I could be Mekadesh. But it was only sort of a backup plan. If that shliach, though, fulfills his shlichus, she's okay with that chasen. She never retracted from that shlichus. So in the, therefore, I would say that if she's Mekadr someone, it's worthless. She already appointed a shliach and she never nullified that shlichus. So that's why it has to say the second case as well, that even when a woman sends a shliach and then she goes and is Mekadr for herself, that itself is a, considered a nullification of the shlichus. On the other hand, if the Mishnah would only say regarding the woman herself, that appointed a shliach, and then she goes and is makadish someone for herself. So over here, I would say, this is something that she herself is doing. This means that this is something that matters more for her. This is the man who she's going to live with her entire life. She's the one that's getting married to him. So the fact that she now is going to be makadish someone else after she sent the shliach, here there's more of a swara to say that the reason she's going to be Mekadosh someone else is because she's very particular about who she wants to get married to. Before she thought that she has one cousin, <coughs> so she sent the shliach, now she realizes she has someone better. So therefore she wants to be Mevatel the shlichus. But when it comes to the father, for the daughter that did a similar thing, he sent the shliach and then there's Mekadosh to someone else, Eime layich pesleh. I would say that for the father, who her daughter gets married to is not as important as it is to her, her, to, to her herself. The father says to himself, as long as my daughter gets married to someone that's a man, that she'll be happy, whether it's this man or that man, the, fa- the father would really be happy with the, the, the Kedushin of the Shliach. He's not really ever nullifying the Shlichus. He's just uh, going and being Mikadosh to someone else as a backup plan if the Shliach won't do it. So therefore, the mission has to say, Tzirichah, the mission has to say in this case as well, that the, when the father went and was Mekadosh or to someone else, it is a sign that he's nullif- nullifying the original Shlichus. Ah, so again, that's the point of the Chiddush of this Mishnah. When you appoint a Shliach, even if you didn't clearly nullify the Shlichus, but if you then go yourself and are Mekadosh, you do an act of Kedush in yourself, that in both cases, whether it's the father, whether it's the, the woman herself, it's a sign that you mean to nullify the original Shlichus. Okay, the Gemara now starts a new union over here. This is uh, in relation to what we just said in the Mishnah, that there's uh, the Koyach of a father, to be, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> to be Mekadish, his uh, daughter. <coughs> that's when they, uh, okay, that's when the father has a daughter, which is at the age of a Katana, and a Naira, that's in, a, a Naira is already after the Bas Mitzvah, which is at 12 years old, until 12 and a half years old. The father still has the power to be Mekadish's daughter. But past that, once once she's 12 and a half, he can't be Mekadosh uh, anymore. She can be Mekadosh herself. So let's see what happened over here. So Dr. Itmer, we learned the following Machleik is Kitsha, via Bederech. The father was going on his way. And he found a beautiful chasen for his daughter. So he received a Kiddushin for his, on behalf of his daughter on the way. But the Kitsha, Atzma, she stays behind, she's at home. And meanwhile, she's being Mekadosh herself to another man in the city. Vaharehi boy geres. Now the shaila is whose kedushin took effect, the father's kedushin, or her own kedushin that she received for herself. Now today, when we're looking at this girl and the question comes up, today she's a begeres. She's already uh, at the age of a begeres, which is mature past twelve and a half, where the father cannot be mekadesha. So Rav Omar, so Rav says, look, harehi begeres lefanenu. We have to go according to who her sta- what her status is right now. We see that she's a begettus today, so therefore we say that her condition took effect and the father's condition did not take effect. Shmuel Amar, but however, Shmuel says 
No, Chayshinon L'Kiddush Shneim. Today she's a begaris, but you don't know what happened when the father was Mekadosh, or maybe that was before. So we have to be Chayshish for the Kiddush of the father, that he was Mekabal for her when he was out on the way, and for her own Kiddush, that she was Mekabal for herself when she was home in the city. Both of these men are going to have to give her a get if she wants to get married to someone else. So first the Gemara explains what is the case of the actual Machleik is here. What are we talking about? Amos. When is this uh, suffix happening when the father is accepting a condition for her and she is taking a condition for herself? When is this happening? If we're talking about she's already a Naira, but it's within that frame, the time frame of six months where she's a Naira and not yet a Begeris. Sometime in that six months. If we know that the father accepted the Kiddushan sometime within those six months. Are we going to say that we see now that she's a begeret, so therefore the fact that the father received the Kiddushan is worthless? Hashtu the Bagra. Now she's a begeret. But the time when the father received the Kiddushan for her was before. We know that the father received the Kiddushan before, for her within the six months. Within the six months, she's not yet a begeret. Right? So in, in that time, I would say that the, she definitely was not a begeret yet. Rashi here actually brings that this whole concept of a begeres is a certain age of maturity. There's, this actual, there's actually a certain physical change in the body of the woman when she becomes a begeres. Rashi brings the Gemara and it says the simonim, what there are in the, in, the, in the body of the woman. But the point is that it is possible for a girl to become fully mature even before six months after a bas mitzvah, within the six months. But it's not possible for her to become a begeres past six months. Once it's six months after the bas mitzvah, we know that she's already fully mature. She's uh, she's bas mitzvah. But she, uh, sorry, she's a begeres. That is. Okay, but not what the gemara is saying is if the suffix about the kiddushin, the father was mekadosher, the daughter was mekadosher. If it's within the six months, so it is possible that she was already a begeres, and therefore her kiddushin is a kiddushin. But it's also possible not. It's still within that time period where it could be she's not yet fully mature and therefore the father's kiddushin is a kiddushin. How could Rav come and say, we see now that she's a begeres and the father's kiddushin does not take effect? Elo, so what does the case here have to be? La'acha shisha. That this whole suffix happens after, it's six months already after she's 12, she's 12 and a half years old already. So in such a case, there's a suffix when the father receives a kiddushin for her, whether the father's kiddushin can take effect, or maybe only her kiddushin that she accepted for herself. So the Gemara asks, how can he say this? After six months, would Shmuel say that you have to be concerned not only that her kiddushin is a kiddushin, but the father's kiddushin as well? Shmuel said, the maximum that there is that it takes for a girl to become fully mature after the bas mitzvah is just six months. After six months, for sure, she's already fully a begeres. So after six months, we know that her condition is a condition and not the father's condition. What's the topic over here? How would Shmuel say that we still have to consider maybe the father's condition to be a condition? Says the Gemara, Lloyd Sricha. So you're right, the, ca the case over here of this Machlech is, is, is a very specific case. The Kaddish, Bahu Yayme, the Mishlam Shisha. The Kiddushan over here took place on that day, the last day of the six months. And so what happened over here is, on the very last day, the father was Makadashir in the morning of that last day. And she was Makabal Kiddushan for herself later in the afternoon. So now the Shaila is, we see later in the afternoon, she's already a Begeris. But what, what, what was in the morning though? We don't, on that very last day, we don't know what her status was in the morning of that day. So therefore, Rav Omar, Harehi Begeres Lufaneinu. Today, now, in the afternoon, when she's in the Kabbalah condition for herself, we see, we see now the simonim that she's already a full Begeres, she's fully mature, and she's out of her father's <laughs> possession. So therefore, Rav says, we look at her status now, and we say, Midahashta Begeres, if we see now that she's a Begeres, Bitsafra Nami Begeres. We say that in the morning, she probably was already... A begeres, she was already fully mature out of the father's rishus, because this is the day, this is the last day when she becomes a begeres. So she had a chazaka up until today. She has a chazaka that she's a naira. She has a chazaka that she's still in the father's possession, but not on this day anymore. On the last day, since this is the day that she becomes a begeres, and we see in the afternoon that it happened that she is a begeres, we assume that it happened already from the morning. The status that we see now determines who she is for the entire day. And we say that for the morning as well. She was out of the father's rishos. And therefore, only her kedushim takes effect, not the father's. But Shmuel Omar, Shmuel says, Hashtu da'i si simonim. No, that it's possible that only now, 
In the afternoon, she brought the signs of being a begeres, and in the morning, she still was not a begeres. In the morning, she was still an Aina. So we, Shmuel says, well, what we see now is what we see now. We don't go back and say that maybe that is who she is already since the morning. No, we, we, there's going to be a suffix here. And therefore the father's kiddushin that he was Mekadosh in the morning is as when she was still a Naira. And now in the afternoon she was Mekadosh herself and she's a begeres. Okay, so the, the point over here is that Shmuel says when we see her status now, we can't use that status now to go back to the morning. We, we, we say that her status now is possibly only for now and not for any time earlier back. So the Gemara asks in this, we find a similar shaila regarding the status of a mikveh. And over, over there we see that we take what's going on now, what we see now in front of us, and we apply that retroactively to before, not like Shmuel. According to Shmuel, what would be different than this kind of a suffix regarding a mikveh? The Mishnah mish, mish, says, mikveh shenimdad You measure the water of a mikveh and you see that it's missing. The right amount of water that it needs for it to be kosher. So right now in front of us, we see that the mikveh is puzzle. So the Mishnah says, Kol mafreya, All things that you were metayed in it. Going back from before, Be'im b'rishu whether this is a mikveh which is in a private place, whether this is a mikveh which is in an open area in a rishus So usually the halacha is any suffix tuma in rishus yachid is tame. We learn out from a saita that the suffix tuma in rishus yachid is tame. Any suffix tuma in rishus is tahir. But over here, it doesn't make a difference where it is. The halacha will always be tame yois. Whatever you were titled in this mikveh will be tame. So what do we see over here? We see the soul of the mikveh right now, and we apply that back. And we say that whatever you table in it before is also going to be tome. But Shmuel, however, didn't say that. Shmuel says, when you see this girl right now in the afternoon, she's a begeres. I don't apply it back to say, then in the morning she was a begeres. I say, no, in the morning she probably was still, uh, still an idol. That's the question on Shmuel. Uh, Rashi, I mean, sorry, Taisvist, that is, points out that really this, is, this could be a question on Rav as well. In a case where this is a Naira that has a Chazaka that she's a Naira, Rav would also say that we give her her status of being a Naira. We're not going to apply what the soul that we see now or the fact that she's a Begeres now retroactively. The only reason Rav argued on Shmuel is, is because it was, the, it was that day that she naturally becomes a Begeres. It's that, and we see she actually became a begettus in the afternoon, so that leads us to say that she probably became a begettus in the morning. But otherwise, I would follow her chazaka from before, which is that she's an Ida. So according to Rav, over here by this mikveh, this mikveh had a chazaka that it was kosher. At a certain point, we discover that it's possible. And we don't go with its chazaka that it had before that it was kosher. We say that the psal that we see now takes us back and we say that anything that what you use in this mikveh from that time when you, you last checked it and it had chazaka that it was kosher, for, but anything past then, we say everything is going to be tame. Why don't we go back to its original chazaka that it had that when you checked it before and it was kosher? So really, it's a question both on Rav and Shmuel. It's just, it's a strong, it's, it's, it's a question on Shmuel. It's more clear that it's a question on Shmuel, but it's really a question on both of them. It's, it, it, this case of the mikveh is hard to understand. Why should I be metame everything from before? So the Gemara explains, Shani Hasam, by the mikveh, the reason we're matam everything from before, because you, besides looking at the status of the mikveh, you have to look also at the status of the person, or maybe of the kalim that you're being, uh, that you're tiveling in the mikveh. The ekelemei Muhammad tami al chaskasa. You have to look at what's tame that you table in the mikveh. <laughs> that has a chazaka. That keli that you table in the mikveh has a chazaka that it's tamay. So you have to place that keli and it's chazaka. And therefore, since this mikveh is a suffix, we don't know at what point it became p- puzzle. It, it, so you can't, you can't be metayr, this keli. Ve'emer le taval. Because I could say that it did, it did not table. Frek the gemare, but you have a competing chazaka here. Adarabe, on the contrary, Hamid Mikval Chazkasai. I should say that the mikveh itself has a chazake. We know that at this point, at a certain point, this mikveh was kosher. And now we discover that it's possible. And we're not sure at what point it became possible. Why shouldn't I place the mikveh in its chazake? So you have the chazake of the keli that's tamay. And have, on the other hand, you have the chazake of the mikveh that it's tired. Ve'emer loy chaser. The mikveh, the chazake of the mikveh says that it, it, should, it should not be a, a suffix. It should not be chaser. should go back to the status it had before. But the Gemara says, no, but over here, Harei chaser lefanecha. Over here, you, you see over here the mikveh right in front of you that right now it is chaser. 
So true, you had a chazaka from before, but right now you have the chazaka of right now. You see the mikveh is possible. So therefore I have to go with the fact that it's possible. In fact, the Gemara, if you sang that svara, so Hanami over here as well, Harei Begeres Lefanecha. You see over here right now, this girl that uh, in the afternoon, she's now a Begeres. So that, that should be a swara to say that the whole day she was a Begeres. Look at who she is now. Shouldn't that determine that she's a whole day? Shmuel said, no, I see her a Begeres. I say it's only now, not before. What's the difference from the Mikveh? So the Gemara says, no, by the Begeres I say, Hashtu de Bagrov. Maybe she only became a Begeres later in the afternoon, not in the morning. So the Gemara says, say the same thing by the Mikveh. Hasam Nami, Hashtu de Chase. Why shouldn't I say by the Mikveh that you see that it's possible now, but maybe the Psal only happened now? Why are you extending back the Psal to before to say that anything that was tabled all this time should all be a Psal or should all be still Tomei? And says the Gemara, and here comes the, 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 the Gemara comes to the maskana of this. The difference between the mikveh and this girl that we don't know what their status is is as follows. When it comes to the mikveh, there are two problems here that we have. Problem number one is that we have the mikveh right in front of us today that's puzzle. Problem number two is that the kalim that you table in the mikveh have a cheskas tumah. So therefore, over there, we're going to have to we're going to be machber and say that uh, what you tabled is tummy. But hacha, when it comes to this girl, that right now we see she's a big ass. There's only one reason to believe that, that, we, that she's a big ass and maybe a big ass even before. The fact that you see that she's a big ass right now. That's it. There's no, there's no, other, no additional svara. Other than that, though, there's, you can say that we know that she was a nada until, until now. We only discovered now that she's a begeres. Until this point, she was a nada. So therefore, Shmuel says, when we see now that she's a begeres, now she's a begeres. But up until this point, we assume that she's a nada. Because you don't have a second swat over here to break the original chazaka. The original chazaka says that she's a nada. Okay, on the other hand, by the mikveh, though, the chazaka of the mikveh has a competing chazaka to break, to break that original chazaka. Okay, so that's why mikveh is a different case. It's not a question on Shmuel. Now the Gemara asks from another case, the Shmuel, according to Shmuel, my Shmuel, what would be different, the halacha that Shmuel said, from the example of a barrel. This is a barrel that was being used to separate truma from it. The Tanya we learned in Abraisa, Hoya Boydik is a chavis, lahafrish, a truma. A person was inspecting his barrels of wine to separate truma. You separate truma, he has barrels of wine, you have to make sure that the barrel that you're using for truma is still wine. What happens if a barrel of wine that you want to use for truma goes sour and it becomes vinegar? So now that barrel can't be used to separate truma from it because wine and vinegar are two different things. You can't separate from one on another. So he was inspecting his barrels, and then he discovers a barrel that was vinegar and he separated wine from it. So he's not sure he separated the truma that is uh, from it. And he's not sure if when he separated the truma, was it still wine and the truma took effect? Or was it already vinegar and it, the, the truma did not take effect? So kol gimel yamim vadai. Three days, we're going to say that it's vadai. Uh, it's, it's here they, the, the b'raisa does not spell out exactly what three days this means. Ashi brings over here two pshatim, there's machlekes about this, whether it means the first three days after you inspected it and saw that it's wine, the first three days after you inspected it, I still consider it definitely to still be wine. It didn't go sour so quickly. Or Gimel Yama means the three days before you discovered that it was vinegar. Three days before that, I already know that it's vinegar for sure. Because if you see today that it's vinegar, you know that, it, that three days before this, it must have been vinegar already. So then it's a Vadai. However, out of the framework of, of, of those three days, it's going to be a suffix. So if you inspected the wine and you saw that it was still wine, going according to that shot, let's say, that you inspected the wine and you inspected the barrel, it's all still wine. But then after three days, you have to now have a suffix. And you, you, don't, you don't know what the status of these barrels are anymore. <clears throat> so this, the mice or the truma that is that you're going to give, it's not clear if it took effect or not. So over here in this case, it says that it's a suffix. Now, but I mean on, on this, the question was asked from the case of the mikveh. Chavis from the, from the case of, the, of this barrel of wine, the contradiction was asked to the case of the mikveh, that you inspected the mikveh and you discovered that it's possible. Why is it when it comes to the mikveh and you, you find, you discover that the mikveh is possible? What do we say? That whatever you tabled in it from before is for sure going to be tummy. Not even a suffix, it's for sure tummy. 
And why over here, when you discover that this barrel became vinegar, so what does it say here in the Braisa? You go back and you say that all the trauma that you gave from before will be a suffix. Why only a suffix? By the mikvah we say, for sure, we consider it to be all possible from before. And here we say it's only a suffix. Oh, Rav Hanina of Surya explained that the Taka Machlaik is about this. Just like uh, by the Chavis, we see it's a Suffolk, even regarding the Mikveh, there's also an opinion that says that it's a Suffolk. Mantana Chavis, who's the opinion here regarding this barrel that says that once you found that it's vinegar, that now it becomes a Suffolk going back? Rabshimini. This is Rav Shimon's opinion. The Gabin Mikveh, Nami Esveke Mashvi. By the Mikveh as well, you, when you discover that the Mikveh is possible, so Rav, Rav Shimon says over there also, we're going to go back and say that all, for all the time before, we're not going to know for sure that the Mikveh was possible, but it's going to be a suffix. The Tanya, as we learned in Abraisa, so Rav Shimon said regarding this Mikveh that you discovered it's possible, Kol Tarash and Naso Agab of Lamafreya, anything that you tivel in this mikveh before, Bain Bereshusa Yachid, Bain Bereshusa Rabim Tmeyes. So the Tanakama says, we know for sure that this mikveh, we see now that it's possible, we know for sure that before we assume that it's possible, and therefore whatever you tivel is going to be completely Tomei. But Rab Shimon Aimer, however, Rab Shimon says, Bereshus Arabim to Hairais, that if it's a mikveh which isn't Bereshus Arabim, and this is a suffix. Going back to what you tabled before, this is a suffix if it was a good mikveh then or not. So if it's in the Rishus Arabim, the rule is any suffix of Tumah in Rishus Arabim is Tahir. But Rishus Ayachid, however, a suffix of Tumah, which is in the Rishus Ayachid, Thailand. Over here, this is going to be a suffix. This remains a suffix. Usually, in a Rishus Ayachid, you learn out from Saita that a suffix Tumah in Rishus Ayachid is for sure Tumah. But over here, it's not exactly compared to a saita. By a saita, because the man and the woman were together, and there's a certain raglai and ladava, there's a certain reason to believe that they became tomei. So over there, the suffix is tomei. But over here, it's, it's, it, we just discovered now the mikveh today is possible, and we don't know. So over there, over in the Rosh it's going to be a suffix. This is all according to Rab Shimon. But the Gemara concludes, Aval Rabbanam. What do you understand from this? Going back to the barrel, once you discover that the barrel is vinegar. Tevel lemafreya. If I see that the barrel today is is vinegar, I say going back to before that when, whenever you separated the truman any time before, I consider it that I know for a fact that it was already vinegar, and it's all going to be the tevel. The, the, the truman did not take effect besides the first three days. Besides the first three days after you inspected it, and you saw that it was still wine. Anything after that, we say that if I discover it today that it's chaimitz. So then going back, it's, we say there was for sure chaimetz all this time. So this is a question on Shmuel. Shmuel says, well, here when you discover a girl is a begeres, I say that right now she's a begeres in the afternoon. I don't say that it goes back to the morning as well. And it says the Gemara here, the Gemara goes through the same exact discussion that it had before. The Gemara says, Shani Hosam, over there by the barrel, it's different. Because you're separating truma on your produce, the produce that you have has a chazaka that it's tevel. The tevel means when the truma was not taken from it. So there's a chazaka that it's still tevel. So you can't take it out of that chazaka. So therefore now if I see that this vinegar that you used for the truma is, is, is vinegar, so, you, have, so you, you should say that the wine of all the other barrels was not rectified. Because there's a chazaka that it's still tevel. Well, you have the chazaka of the tevel, but Adarab, on the contrary, we know that it was wine. Why don't they place it on its chazaka that it was wine? And I should say that it did not become chaymet. So you have these two competing chazakas over here. But the Gemara again says, Right now you're looking at the barrel, you see clearly that it is vinegar. So therefore I follow what I see right now in front of my eyes. So, if so, so I see right now this girl in the afternoon that she's already a begeres. Why don't I follow that status and say that she's already a begeres from the morning? So, this is still a question on Shmuel. But the Gemara answer is, I see her right now that she's a begeres. I say that right now in the afternoon she became a begeres, not in the morning. If so, why shouldn't I say regarding the wine that only now it became chaymets? And not um, earlier on. And says the Gemara here, the Gemara comes to the same point that it said before. Hosom tarti Regarding this barrel that you discover now is vinegar, over there you have two problems. Number one, you have the chazaka of all the produce that it's tevel. And, the, and number two, the fact that you see that this barrel that you wanted to use for truma, you see right now that this is vinegar. 
So you have two issues here. Therefore, we consider it the truma did not take effect. But over here, you only have one sign that says that she's a begettist. The fact that you see now that she's a begettist. Nothing other than that. But other than that, she has a chazaka from before that she's an ida. So therefore, Shmuel says that not until you discover the fact that she's a begettist do we know that she's a begettist. In the morning, we say that she was uh, still an ida. Says the Gemara name, the Tanoi. Shall we say that the Machlekes of Rav and Shmuel is a Machlekes of Tanoim? What's the, 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 the Machlekes here? We find here Rashi brings the story of a person that wrote in a star <coughs> that he's giving away all of his possessions to somebody, everything, without exception. So, what's the halacha of such a, of, of a person that does such a thing? If he did this when he was a Shchiv Mira, when he was not well and he was about to die, so then the halacha is if he recovers then we say that the gift is null and void because he only was giving away everything because he thought he's passing away. So he didn't need anything for himself. But if he gave away this gift when he was healthy, so then he can't retract from this because he's, he's healthy and he still gives everything away so that the, it takes effect. So now a person writes such a star that he's giving everything away and now there becomes a, a fight between the two people here. The giver says that I only wrote this because I wasn't well. I was a shchiv mida, so now I want to retract from it because I'm healthy now. And the recipient says, no, you wrote, you wrote to me this when, uh, when, you were, when you were well. So therefore, it's mine. You gave me a matana. So the question is, me might see me yad me. Who takes out the, this, this money from who? So the, the, the Braise says, the first opinion here is, who might see me yadam? The one, the one that gave it, he's the one that can be might see the money. He says that, it's, uh, that I only gave it because I wasn't well. So therefore now, I, I, he takes back the money for himself. Beloy raya, and he doesn't have to bring any raya whatsoever that he was a shchiv when he wrote this matana. Even though we see right now he's healthy, but it doesn't matter. That the, 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 the fact that um, the fact that we see right now that uh, he's healthy, we're not going to say that that means that Bishas uh, he wrote the matana he was also healthy. No, he's going to be believed to say that then he was a shchiv but they, the, the people that he wrote the Matana to, cannot take it out from him below Raya, without any Raya. That's the Rabbi Yaakov. This is Rabbi Yaakov's opinion. So what do we see over here, basically? That when you see this person right now, that he's healthy, I'm not going to say, since he's healthy now, probably when he wrote the Matana, he was also healthy then. Not necessarily. You see right now that he's body, that he's a healthy person, that's today. That doesn't mean that before when he wrote it, he was healthy as well. When he wrote his matana before, then he could have been a shchiv mira. This is fitting really with Shmuel's opinion. Shmuel says, you see a girl that in the afternoon she's a begettess, right now she's a begettess. That doesn't mean that before in the morning when her father was Mekadashar, she was also a begettess. Could be then that she was an ida. Now, another opinion here is, Rab Nasa Noimer, in body who, if we see right now that he's healthy, so then all of the Havi Raya, Shaya Shchiv Mira. He's going to have to bring a Raya that when he wrote this gift, that then he was not healthy, he was a Shchiv Mira. Vavim Shchiv Mira Hu. If we see now that he's, that he's not well, so then Aleim Lahavi Raya, Shabari Haya. So then the people that received the gift are going to have to bring a Raya that when he wrote this star, this gift, that then he was, was healthy. Now this seems to be following Rav's opinion. Rav says when you see a certain status now, you assume that that's what it was before. When you see this begettus in the afternoon, you assume that she was a begettus already in the morning. Says the Gemara, name Rav, Domek Rav And I would say that Rav follows Rav Nosen's opinion. And Shmuel, Domek Rav Yaakov. And Shmuel follows Rav Yaakov's opinion. So the Gemara answer is, no, that case is different. Omaloch Rav, Rav will answer you. Ano, Domri, Afilik Rav Yaakov. I that say that when you see a status now, that she's a begettus, I use that as an indication for before, that she was a begettus before, I could follow Rabbi Yaakov's opinion over there. So why over there, when I see that he's healthy now, do I not use that as an indication that he was healthy before? Or the same thing if he was not healthy now, why don't I use that as an indication before? Because, Ad, can like Omar Rabbi Yaakov Hossam, the reason why the one that's giving the gift has the upper hand is because I have to place the money in its chazaka. He's the, he's the giver. The giver has the upper hand because the money was first his. So because he has the chazaka on it, therefore he has always the upper hand over there. So over there, there's another factor. Cheskas mamin. Avol hacha, but when it comes over here regarding the the, the suffix regarding this girl, me name Muhammad Gufal Chaskasai. Over here, you can't say that you place this body of this girl in a chazake. It's it's talking about on the day that she naturally becomes a begettus. This is the day when her body changes. So you can't 
place her anymore in a chazaka. Therefore, over here, Rav says, if you see in the afternoon she's a begeres, we assume that in the morning she was a begeres as well. Shmuel, Ma, Shmuel says an opposite svar. Ana Domri, Yafil, Rav Nosen. I that say that when you see your status today, so you, you don't uh, go back to before. I could agree to what Abnasan said over here, that when you see the person healthy now, you do go back to before and say that when he wrote the gift, he was healthy. Why? Over there, the reason why Abnasan says that is, the Kula Alma B'cheskes B'riyim Kaimi. Because people, when you see a person that's healthy, it's safe to assume that he was healthy before. That's the normal status of people. People are, are healthy. So, man de kamapik nafsheim, the chazake, have ale la suyeraya. So, therefore, that's what Abnasan is saying. If you see the person is not healthy now, so then you could assume that he was not healthy before. But if you see the person is a regular healthy person now, why should we take him out of his chazaka of being healthy before? That's in the case of Rabnasan. Avol hacha bod over here. When it comes to this girl, where there's a suffix regarding at what time she became a begeres, mi kamapke nafsha mechazake the kamei. So are we, are we taking her out of her chazaka from before? In other words, over here, there are, we're talking over here about this naira, on this last day of the six months. So over here, since it's uh, on this very last day, so it, it's very possible that she only became a begeres now. She had a chazaka before of being a naira. This is a day that her body changes. How could you say that because she was a naira before, so therefore, not, when you see her now becoming a begeres, <clears throat> what, what's the basis to say that she was a begeres in the morning? Maybe she only became a begeres now. Every girl at a certain point, her body changes. We don't know when that happened. It could have been in the morning, could have been in the afternoon. When you talk about a person which is healthy or sick over there, when you see a person that's healthy, you assume that he always was healthy. When it comes to the, this, this girl on this day when her body changes, how do you know at what point her body changed? Maybe it changed only in the afternoon. So therefore over here, you can't follow the previous chazakeh. Says the Gemara, Neime Kahani Tanoi. Shall we say the Machloikis of Rav and Shmuel is a Machloikis amongst the, the, the following Tanoim over here? And here we see Tanoim that seemingly argued in the exact same Machloikis as Rav and Shmuel. Kitcha Avia Bederech. The father accepted a Kedushan for her from someone when he was out on the way. And the Kitcha Atzma Be'ir. She accepted a Kedushan for herself in the city. Vaharei Begeres. And now we see she's a Begeres. So this must be talking like the case that we mentioned before that it's on the on the last day of the six months when she becomes a begeres, And the father accepted the Kiddushan in the morning and she accepted the Kiddushan in the afternoon. Tani Chodem one Brayse, it says, Harei begeres lefanenu. We see right now that she's a begeres, and therefore what we say is that uh, she's a beget, she, that uh, she might have been a begeres, or she not might have, that she probably was a begeres from the morning. This is Ralek Rav's opinion and therefore only her Kiddushan takes effect. The Tanya Edoch, but in another Brai, it said exactly like Shmuel, Chashirin L'Kiddush Yishnei. No, that we see that she's a Begeres now, but that's only in the afternoon. In the morning, she could, she could have still been a Naira. So therefore, we have to be concerned for the father's Kiddushin and for her Kiddushin. So my love, don't you think Chad Kerav, the first Brai says like Rav, Chad Kishmuel. The second, second Brai says like Shmuel. Says the Gemara, Loi, this, these two Brises, they're not arguing Bechlau. They both follow Shmuel's opinion that when you see that she's now a Begeres, I don't assume that in the morning she was a Begeres. I just look at her now. But Khan, over here the case is different. When the Brises says that you have to be concerned about that, that, that uh, she's saying that I'm a Begeres and therefore she's telling her father, your condition is worthless, what's it talking about? She's coming and telling you the father, clearly, I know that I was a Begeres already in the morning. She's contradicting the father. In such a case, I accept the words. But in a case where she doesn't know, she's not, she doesn't know anything. We see right, right now she's a begeres and she's not saying anything about this. In such a case, I, I say like, uh, like, like what Shmuel said, that I see that she's a begeres now, but we don't know what she was uh, before. In the, in the morning she could have still been an Ida. So it's two different cases, so there's no argument there. Says the Gemara, if so, the name with the Masnisa loy pligia. If we just explain that in the Brisa here, these two Brises are not arguing. Amiroy nami loy pligi. Maybe Rav and Shmuel never argued about this. Maybe Rav was talking in a case where she came and said that I was a begetus already from the morning. She clearly is telling us this, and Shmuel was talking in a case where she's not saying this. So maybe they're also not arguing. Says the Gemara, the Gemara brings an incident that happened that proves that Rav and Shmuel did argue. It is, but could this be true that they weren't arguing? There was a situation like this that happened, and he passed like Rav. 
the ikbit Shmuel, and Shmuel was upset that he paskened like Rav and not like him. And Vaamar and he said the following expression on the on Rav Yosef. Kulal mekaylele bekabezuta. Everybody got wisdom in a small measure. And v'haimer the rabban and kaylele bekayla rabba. And he thinks that he got uh, more wisdom and more more uh, than everybody else. He saw, in other words, he was saying, how could he take such a responsibility upon himself to say that this woman that might be an Asher Sish, that she's not an Asher Sish? So he was upset about the fact that he passed like Rav. So if you're going to say that Rav and Shmuel weren't arguing, they were talking in different cases, why was he upset at, at, at Rav Yasef that he didn't pass like him? They're not even arguing. Maybe he only passed like Rav when the girl herself is coming and telling us that I was already a begettus from the morning. So then we pass like Rav that the father's kedushin is not a kedushin at all. He's not being matter and sish. She's saying it, and that's why we believe her. So the point is the fact that Shmuel was makpid. We see that Rav and Shmuel did argue about this. The Gemara concludes. We pass on like Shmuel. The Ravashi Yama Hilchesek Vasei the Rav that we pass on like Rav. And the Gemara concludes. The Hilchesek Vasei the Rav. The halacha is like Rav.